this morning is Cattle Parish, uh, Cattle Parish Sheriff Steve Prater. Hey, Mr. Steve, how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Well, there was, rather than me describe it, why don't you take the reins, as it were, and tell us about the Steve Prater open letter that sort of has to do with uh, the Florida school shootings, et cetera. Tell us about what you wrote to folks. Well, for um, for several days now, I've been working with our staff, and we're trying to put together and, and uh, talk about the fact that we we need to do something immediately to help uh, to keep our kids safe. It's one thing to talk about background checks and mental health and gun control, but that's the same things we've been talking about for years. And nothing has been done. We've got to do something to help secure our kids on these campuses. I sent a letter to the Kettle Parish School Board asking them to consider letting us put together a training course and let us put together with their assistance some sort of a, a very, very serious and complete vetting process, such as psychologicals and and uh, fitness and that sort of thing. And let's arm some of our teachers or coaches that are willing that possibly have law enforcement or military backgrounds that are willing to uh, carry a concealed weapon on the campus and to help to secure our kids. That's something we can do immediately. And so I sent this letter to the school board to consider, and we'll see what they can do. Uh, the law allows them to do that with no changes in the legislature. It's not a long, uh, drawn-out process other than the fact of the, of the extreme vetting that would have to be done and the training that they would have to be willing to undergo on a continual basis. Excuse me, Mr. Steve, you had said what the law will allow them to do. In a circuitous way, you are kind of the law. What will it allow them to do? Well, the state law uh, says it's up to the administrators or the school board to determine who on the campuses can have a, a, a firearm. Right now, it's kind of uh, frustrating to me, in addition to all the talking and, and gum bumping that goes on, um, is the fact that um, we have these big signs up that, that brag about this is a gun-free zone. Well, if I'm an evildoer, if I want to hurt somebody, that's one of the best places to go. Uh, that's why I always talked about the courthouse and the fact that you can't carry a gun into the courthouse. Well, that, that tells anybody that's on the steps of the courthouse that whoever's coming out doesn't have a gun. And the same thing with the schools. We brag about being gun free and then we, we wonder why somebody will sneak a gun in there and hurt our kids. Sheriff, let me ask you this. Teachers will, I know it'll be voluntary, but teachers groups will say Yes, I know some teachers would volunteer, but we, we're we not in the business of that. Teachers shouldn't be having to carry guns and protect the schools. We're here to teach the kids. How do you respond? Well, we're, I mean, we're we're here to carry guns and to protect people in the, in the law enforcement end, but we go and teach DARE. We teach child safety. We teach neighborhood groups and how to prevent crime. So it's, it's, it's a case of you got to do what you got to do. And uh, you've got to meet whatever kind of threat that's there. And so we try to meet threats, and, and teachers have to be nurses now. They have to do other things. Somebody's got to secure, help us to secure the campuses. The school board can't afford to put as many police officers or deputy sheriffs on these campuses as what would be needed. So let's, let's give them some assistance. What, I mean, if that, just, what if the gun gets into the hands, though, of a kid or, or the wrong person? I mean, teachers m are not going to be properly trained. I know you say you're going to train them, but how are they going to know for all those circumstances where that gun could get into the wrong hands? Well, that's the kind of thing that that, that you've got to train and you got to hope for the best. And I don't think that we've got a whole bunch of kids that are going to attack the teacher and take the teacher, teacher's gun. But that's the kind of thing that we've got to talk about. We've got to uh, look at the threat assessment there also. But what you got to also consider is that these same kids that we're trying to keep away from any kind of gun on the campuses, as soon as school's out, they go to the mall, they go to the restaurant, they go to the grocery store, and it's got people walking around in there all the time with concealed weapons. And and so it's not like it's not like there. It's just a uh, pristine and, and virgin atmosphere uh, that they're in all the time or, or situation. I mean, there's guns, a lot of guns. What and I'm just throwing something out there uh, to to say let's try something immediately to try 
try to stop what's going on. What kind quit of, talking about it. Do something. Crap. What kind of response have you gotten to this letter that uh, was made public last evening? Well, I uh, hadn't got a lot of verbal response as far as people calling because we didn't didn't get it out to you yesterday afternoon. But uh, I'm sure I'll get a lot of response today on, on the like the Facebook. I, I got information from Cindy Chadwick that we've had over a thousand comments on it. Thousands and thousands of people have viewed it, and uh, and it's been shared. So I, I can't even imagine how many how many comments there's been. Most of them, according to what I'm told, most of them are favorable. Some of them don't understand or or. Naturally, you have people out there that are quick to say they know the answer and and uh, this isn't the answer and all that. And all I'm saying is I don't have all the answers, but let's try something. Let's do something. Um, and and I mean, we got all kind of dialogue about what we need to do is to instill better values in our kids, teach them to to value human life. Well, you, give me a lesson plan on that, and 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 we'll go with that too. But in the meantime. We have these evil nutcases out there that want to hurt people, and we need to stop some of those and let them think about it. If they're going to bring a gun on a campus, they don't really know who else might have a gun that could neutralize that threat, uh, i.e. shoot them. In the, in the Florida case, the revelations are coming out that there was an armed officer on the campus, that he sat in his car. Your reaction to that? Yeah, that's, that makes you sick to your stomach. That person should have known, and I'm not saying, you know, we all know that law enforcement, there's thousands of them with different personalities and different training and different abilities. And that person, there's no excuse for that. That person should have known when he got up that morning that I don't have what it takes to be in law enforcement. I don't have what it takes to have a gun and to protect people. And I have no, I mean, I, I feel sorry in a way for that person because they chose the wrong profession that they have to live with that embarrassment and that pain the rest of their lives if they didn't intervene. But that person should have known when they went into law enforcement, I don't have the guts to stand up and, and do what I got to do. What if a teacher doesn't have the guts to stand up? That's my point. What if they don't have the guts? Yeah, they have a gun. They had good intentions. They were going to protect, but they, they're not, they don't have it in them. They want to be a teacher. Well, what if they do have the guts? Good point. Good point. Lots of thought-provoking comments, Sheriff. We can't thank you enough for joining us so early. I appreciate it. Okay, you're quite welcome.